and welcome to another episode of Divorce TV. We've got a fantastic lineup as always, a wonderful healing meditation at the end. Uh, before that, I'm talking to Paul Sanford, who's a part time judge and has a real passion for mediation and online in particular. And we're also going to be coming up to date with divorce news and a bit of learning around the divorce process and the effects it can have on people. But to start with, we're going to go and catch up with what's happening in the news. We shall start today with Sarah Millican in the mirror. They're reporting that she's revealed how that she's struggled with her mental health since divorcing her first husband 16 years ago. The 45 year old comedian admitted that she may never stop having counselling and has therapy had therapy for years after her shock divorce, despite remarrying in 2013. Now that sounds quite drastic, but if you read on, you'll see that in fact her continuing the counselling is really that just that she found it really useful and it's quite evolved of her to realise and acknowledge that particularly when a divorce is a shock, it does, it does traumatise you and just because you get over the initial effects, uh, they it can still have a long lasting impact. So the more care you take of yourself and you know, the counselling's obviously helped her enormously and that's probably making sure that her new relationship is gonna go on being successful. But don't think that just you get over it and that's the end of it. It is perfectly normal for it to be an ongoing issue and it's great that she's prepared to, to talk about it. The conversation, uh, this talks about French style divorce, uh, which maybe we should be thinking about because of the number of divorces that are happening since lockdown. It says there's currently legislation, uh, we know this in the UK, that you, the Parliament has proposed an end to fault-based divorce in England and Wales. Hurrah! However, the, uh, the Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Bill uh, seeks to end the blame game by allowing either one or both parties to state that the marriage has broken down irretrievably. Furthermore, if one party wants the divorce, the other party will not be able to contest it, as happened in the case of uh, Tina Owens, which became a big big news story a while back when she wasn't allowed to have her divorce, or so it appeared anyway. The bill would allow some time for parties to agree on practical arrangements. The minimum period is to be 20 weeks. However, the current six week waiting period before a final decree will potentially be retained. Now, while the new legislation provides an opportunity to improve our situation, because you won't have to say horrible things about each other, which will be wonderful, it will still leave England and Wales lagging behind other countries that have a more liberal approach, more suited to post-pandemic separations. So listen to this, this is what they do, uh, divorce à la française. Uh, the French approach is pati in particular may offer a solution. France introduced divorce by mutual consent in the 1970s and since 2016, the civil code has allowed parties to agree that their marriage has broken down without even the involvement of a judge. In the French example, if a couple has property to divide, a notary must be involved to oversee the division. And there is a charge, a fee of 1% of the total value of the assets, depending on how much the parties hold in common. And the family court gets involved only when a child requests to be heard or there's a special jurisdiction that has to be exercised because a child is in danger. So they have a system that's very much based on keeping things out of court. It'd be interesting to know what uh, the lawyers and mediators as well in this country feel about that system and whether it's something that we should or shouldn't adopt here in the UK. This is the Law Society Gazette saying that social distancing causes delays at the Regional Divorce Centre. Now, Lisa Pepper, a family partner at Lon the London law firm Osborne's Law, she said that consent orders are often about the family home. To reach a settlement, clients will need a mortgage offer, but the offer will expire within six months and the clients will have to reapply. Some clients will be worried if their financial situation changes. What if income, given COVID-19, is not where it was a few months ago? So having to wait potentially you know, 20 weeks for um, 20 months rather 
no sorry 20 weeks for your consent order to go through can cause uh, can really mess things up big time pepper said that 20 weeks is a long time to wait when couples are trying to do to do the right thing and settle out of court as the court wants them to financial information may have changed by the time the judge considers the application the Gazette was told that the delay should be temporary as staff have been provided with laptops to work from home. Regional divorce centres opened in 2000, two, yeah, 2015, but they've been heavily criticised by senior judges for delays and inefficiencies. Her Majesty's Court and Tribunal Services has closed some of the centres as more and more work is issued online. So things are moving online. That should make things easier and we're certainly going to be talking about online divorce and using mediation in particular but other forms as well in a second with Paul Sanford coming up any moment now. Paul welcome you're on the show and uh, thank you so much for joining us. And to start with, I'd love to know a little bit more about Albert Square Mediation, which is uh, the company that you where you deliver your online mediation through. And um, you don't just do normal, just civil or civil mediation, do you? You do other forms like matrimonial, I believe. We do. We the whole ethos of the company I set up was to provide a range of services. Uh, even when I did my first training, I was slightly concerned that in some respects mediators, and particularly family mediators, sort of go through the same old rigmarole and they play the game and they mirror what's being done and they don't get things done. And the idea of my company is to get things done. So we offer mediation, we offer the alternative of facilitated discussion where people can sit down and talk things in the round without even as of mediation. Uh, in relation to family issues, we have a financial advisor because most things in, and many things in my experience in, media, in family mediation revolve around the issue of finances and people don't understand them. So they go into mediation or they go into divorce or they go into whatever and they're not ready for these things and they need to be told what their finances are. The classic case of this is something that... Uh, Henry Elliston, the gentleman in question, told me he came across a settlement done by solicitors that legally was fair, but actually cost the parties thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds because they hadn't looked at all the financial implications of it. And he came up with something much better in the space of a few hours and saved them. He got the same, he got the same result, but he saved them all that money. So, it Paul, was, with with the uh, your experience of, of mediation whether it's civil mediation or family mediation um and also perhaps telling us a little bit more about the the different areas that you cover in albert square mediation what kind of stories can you share with us about how it's not just the same as moving normal people in doing mediating in a room online there's some actual benefits aren't there to, to being online well I, I came to it years ago when it was barely done and I simply had to do it because I had, I had one party in Dubai and one party in Surrey and necessarily they couldn't hook up. So I learnt it backwards and it worked. Uh, not long after that, I was approached by a, an American woman who lived in Greece uh, and she and her husband wanted to separate but not divorce. They basically become best friends and they wanted to maintain their best friendship but they wanted to agree something informally and he was subject to some fairly complex jurisdiction of some American state rather than she wasn't. So it was actually a legal nightmare, but they didn't want to get divorced. They did not want to go down the mediation route or the informal route. And we, I simply helped them online over hundreds of miles, because they were both in Greece at the time, to reach this settlement they were both happy with. I mean, they were told that they had to go, you know, the legal advice, etc., etc., go to lawyers, etc. They they chose not to, and it worked beautifully. And I had a third example, which was actually a civil one, but involved two people. They were completely wrong ends of Scotland from one another. Uh, most both of them miles from public transport, one with childcare commitments, and if the three of us had tried to meet up, it would have probably taken us 
months to resolve and sort out and pay for. Uh, and one of those parties had childcare issues as well. So we did it online and it worked very well. Uh, there was a slight concern about the internet connection, but we overcame it. And by actually having to physically do it rather than learn about it, I was absolutely convinced it works. And I've done that with people ever since. Actually, you've brought up in a way, a sideways way, a point there because lots of mediators now are rushing online because they have to. Um, what do you think is the level of sort of training and competence? Because it's not as simple as just transferring what you would do in a room to uh, to Zoom, is it? No, I use my judicial skills because I have a background in, in talking to people, often in often with interpreters, so I have that level of skill. Uh, I'd like to mention that our chief family mediator is Austin Chessel, who does both and does them extremely well and has, has been formally trained in online mediation through one of the top providers. So he uses it very well. Uh, the thing about, about online, sometimes we must be face to face, but actually I'm looking at you now and I'm looking at you very closely but I'm not looking at you in I, I can see every bit of your body language, but I'm not being intrusive. And you might be in a in a face to face situation. Uh, it's actually it's actually got more cost effective because you know if you wanted to do it seven thirty at night, you could do it at seven thirty at night when kids are in bed. Which means you haven't got to pay child funding fees, you haven't got to travel, you haven't got to do all those sorts of things. Uh, it is also a useful platform for people who may not get on that well. I had a particular case where I didn't expect the parties face to face to be difficult, but unfortunately the man behaved in a manner that was by anybody's reckoning completely unacceptable. And it took me 10 minutes to shut him up. I had to shut him up and it took me 10 minutes. He was, he, he, he really lost control. Had he been on, had he been online, I would have shut him off. Uh, his his poor ex had to suffer a great deal of abuse. I just physically couldn't stop him. I tried to. But online, you can just turn him off. Online. So I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're off. I think there's many, many, many spouses right now thinking that that alone could be a good advantage if they've got a someone who who's perhaps quite domineering. Which actually brings us to this issue around uh, a lot of people seem to believe, which I believe to be a myth, that mediation is only suitable for people if they get on well, but also um, is a complete tick box to court and if they are in any kind of um, an abusive relationship. And obviously there's degrees, but there, there does, I get the feeling, do you get the feeling that perhaps there's too many people tick boxing out of mediation, where in fact, you know, the level of, of controlling behavior could be controlled uh, well within a mediation session online in a way that would be difficult face to face because of the fear factor of, of one of the participants. What, what are your thoughts on that? I've had a number of interesting discussions with other mediators, experienced mediators, when the public arms looking, and they actually agree with that view. Uh, in the same way, you can't be in your face if, if, if there is. It, it, it's people in those situations who have the most need of it, and they are actually deprived because people go. Some mediators go on this this rather complacent route. Of saying, oh, there's a bit of just there's a bit of nastiness. We won't get in, we won't get involved, and they only go for the safe cases because they want to keep the figures up. I'm sorry to say that, but I think it's true. And myself and Austin do not shun those cases. We deal with them. And I would say online, look, I'm sorry if you if you if you don't behave, you will be cut off. And there's nothing people can do about it. It is, it is in our domain. And in the Dubai example that I mentioned, there was an element of that. And it worked. And I did, within within limits, keep the parties on an even keel. And the people that really need it, that really need, as you say, to make peace your weapon of choice, get the opportunity to do it. Uh, the great irony of that particular live case I mentioned was that the, the lady came up with a very sensible solution. And the man was so beside himself that he didn't, that he didn't even notice. <laughs> and as they said, she tried to tell him. And she was actually making a massive concession 
but he was so besotted with what he, whatever he was going on about because we lost track with it uh, that, he, that he actually missed the opportunity to settle the case. There's something you mentioned to me when we were talking the other day that I would love you to to round off with. And uh, before we do that, just to say there is a QR code on this screen. If anyone puts their phone camera on it, they will go to your website. And what can they do if they do that, Paul? Well, they they can book an appointment with me, and they will get that they can speak to me any time between eight eight in the morning and eleven at night, Monday to Sunday. And I'll be happy to speak to them. And I will either deal with it myself or I'll refer them to Austin or to an appropriate member of the team. And they will hear quickly. Brilliant. Completely without obligation. Thank you. And uh, just to round off, I'd love you to share what you shared with me the other day about a couple where, in, in the end, the women in concern made it so difficult, it was so intractable, they weren't able to reach agreement in mediation. However, the husband was really uh, grateful for the time that he spent in the mediation. Could you explain why? Because I think it's another aspect of mediation that people don't often think about. I think it would be fair to say that the couple in question did not get on. And there was a lot of animosity. Uh, and I think that the demands that the lady put forward were, well, shall we say they were on, on the thick edge of things. And in a sense, she was right, in a sense, she was wrong. And he saw this as an opportunity to come up with solutions. He couldn't speak to her face to face because it was difficult. But he did actually say to me that he went away and thought of some options because, in a sense, he got put in the spotlight and he had to think. And he realised through mediation that he had to think outside the box, and he and he resolved to go to go away and do that. So although it didn't work, it worked. And did it save him from becoming a, a victim of a very sort of nasty, vicious, long, expensive court battle with him fighting against her because he had the opportunity to go? Hang on a minute, she's. Uh, this is the interpretation I got from you was that he could see that that would be a disastrous route and he was able to see a little bit more about where she was coming from difficult as though she was and be more strategic about his approach have I have I got that right he did because he hadn't been prepared to take her view on board he also understood the economics of the situation and it made him understand that it's actually money that matters that's why we have Henry our financial advisor on board because actually he, he began to understand what was viable and what was op, what was sensible in terms of hard cash, whereas he hadn't before because he was completely unprepared for it. So I gather that the matter, I, I, I wasn't there at the settlement, but I gather things did ultimately resolve in a manner that was accept, acceptable to both parties. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, Paul, and we'll get you on the show again at a later time. And uh, you're in Portugal, oh, aren't, you're in yeah. Portugal, aren't you? I am, yes. Yes, so that's a, a lovely place to mediate online from. All right, thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye. So that was brilliant. Thank you, Paul. I always love hearing stories around mediation and the different ways it can be used. Um, we're going to now move to the learning section. So get your brains in gear. Uh, there should be some interesting facts as well for you. Hopefully not too scary. So... Last week we had uh, we started talking about the um, the the sort of pay, painful aspects of divorce and sticking plasters and part uh, and it was the about stemming the flow of money uh, the hidden costs of divorce and also I asked the question does divorce mediation really mean smaller maintenance payments because that is uh, something that sort of seems to be generally believed and um, we're going to look at that now. I've, this is part two because there was so much to say on this one that uh, I wanted to split it in half. So the reality of today's economy is simple. Many spouses to be divorced stay in the same home, occupying different floors or rooms until they can afford to make the financial investment in divorce. It can work out okay to, or it can be 
more likely a complete stress nightmare for all. But sometimes it's the only way to work, work it out financially until both spouses are up and running financially and able to, to afford to separate. So how can you help someone who's faced with the financial reality that divorce makes people poorer, not richer? There's this mad idea that particularly that we wives are going to end up with all this money, but you are actually splitting something uh, in, at the very least in half. So you're always going to end up with less than you started with. So the best way to, to do this is to discourage, whether it's yourself or someone you know, from throwing money away on an adversarial divorce, which is only going to make the situation worse. And have they thought about the fact that getting a bigger house for them and the kids than they really need. Whilst leaving dad in a one bed flat means that he has nowhere to have the kids overnight. So you end up not only disadvantaging your kids when it comes to spending time with their dad, but also no nights off without having to pay for a babysitter. It's, you'd be surprised how often this is not thought through by um, particularly mothers who have got locked into an adversarial divorce. It's funny how people run to talk to a lawyer when divorce is in the air, yet many lawyers are not trained in dealing with the complex finances. So if you own properties or have a pension that needs splitting, the person to talk to is a financial planner. Ideally a financial planner who is experienced in dealing with divorce scenarios. They're not all experienced, so you do need to do your homework a little bit and Find, choose the right ones. This is where being able to sit in the same room as your ex and talk about finances in a constructive way becomes a real bonus. Uh, nothing is to be gained by arguing as they own, this only slows down the process and makes creating a viable financial plan for both you and your future, your, both your futures more difficult and leads to further costs. A financial planner usually charges far less per hour than a lawyer does. Bitter and long divorce only makes the law firms richer and the emotional costs and collateral damage to the kids can be horrendous. What starts out as a genuine concern for managing finances for the future of a now extended family can easily become fuel for a bitter and protracted battle that is more about inflicting harm on the other person than in creating a stable financial future for the children. So steer yourselves towards mediation and collaborative law, which you can now do online as well as face, soon, hopefully, face to face again. But surely mediation and collaborative law means less maintenance or in the state's alimony. This is a myth. Let me explain. There's a great study. US studies have shown that women using mediation end up with higher maintenance payments over a long period of time than women who go through the courts. And that's not taking into account the additional cost of court hearings and legal fees in an adversarial divorce, which can fritter away money better targeted and on university fees or investing it in starting a new business. Robin Williams once described adversarial divorce very eloquently. He said, ah, yes, divorce from the Latin word meaning to rip out a man's genitals through his wallet. And as we know, uh, Robin Williams suffered deeply uh, psychologically, emotionally from his divorce. And it, is, uh, it, is, it has been suggested that that might have also been a contributing factor to his suicide. On a slightly lighter note, actor Richard Wagner believed that divorce is one of the most financially traumatic things you can go through. Money spent on getting mad or getting even is money wasted. I'm coming now to our shared stories and we've got a, a little tale from the lovely Nigel and he's going to be talking about his experience of integrating families. And my wife, my new wife, who's still my wife, uh, my forever wife, rather than my second wife, I call her, um, actually came in and helped me a lot with writing cheques. She said, come on, let's sit down, let's write 12 months worth of cheques. Um, it was not easy um, for Jackie. Uh, my um, divorced wife was uh, quite hostile, uh, which caused a lot of um, problems, anguish, 
and difficulty at the beginning of our marriage. And um, I would say to anyone getting married with the divorced family, it's, it's not going to be easy to integrate at all. And um, don't blame themselves if, you know, if it's tough. If it's possible to integrate with the old family, that's fine. But don't sacrifice your new life. Lovely story. Thank you, Nigel. Um, very real. So, yeah, we all want extended families to work, but sometimes it's just really difficult. And as he said, uh, focus on your new family too. Never give up on your children if you've got an extended family where another parent is making things difficult. But don't try to make something harmonious that just is never going to be. Now we're going to come to one of my favourite parts of the show, which is the healing at the end. I'm going to give a little intro here and then we're going to be welcoming in Mandy. Welcome, Mandy. Thank you so much. And I brought you in quite late notice as well. So you probably didn't know on Monday that you were going to be doing a healing session on the best way to divorce TV show. No, but I'm absolutely delighted to be here. So thank you for having and be me. And my pleasure. And before uh, I give you the floor and we all, while everyone gets themselves comfortable and ready and make sure no one's going to disturb them for the next 10 minutes, could you just give us a little bit of intro, a little bit about yourself, and then I'll just flow into the meditation. Absolutely, yes. Um, I've been a meditation teacher for over 25 years now, and um, quite recently I was interested in uh, listening to Paul and working online. I've, I've now um, moved most of my work since the coronavirus to online. And, and my main interest is um, I teach something called true rest meditation, which is uh, it's a traditional form of meditation where you're, it's done lying down. And um, it's really profoundly relaxing for the mind and the body and I'm going to give you just a little bit of a a little bit of a taster of that this evening thank you okay so so make sure that your body is really really comfortable whether you're lying down or sitting and uh, let your eyes gently close so your eyes are gently closed and then make any final adjustments that you need to now, either to your mind, either to your body or your environment, so that you can make a commitment for these next 10 minutes to simply resting in being. And to mark the transition that we're making now, let's take a really deep releasing breath together. So inhaling really low into your abdomen and hunch and squeeze your shoulders right up to your ears. So hunching your shoulders right up and then let your body go heaving a sigh of relief. And in your own time, as the energies of your mind-body system begin to settle down naturally, take a few more of those really slow, really deep, releasing breaths slowing your breath right down. There's no rush, no hurry. Inhaling really low, right down into your belly first. Tummy filling up like a balloon. 
And then just give the exhalation away with a lovely long and soft sigh. And do take just a few more of those really slow, low, releasing breaths. Inhaling like you have all the time in the world to really feel and to drink in every drop of breath. And on every exhalation, just letting it all go. Really give yourself permission just to let it all go and really get a sense of how it would be right now just to be here, just as you are, to do absolutely nothing, nowhere to go, nothing to get, just being here is enough. Just being here is enough. And see if, just for now, you can stay with the simple experience, body, breathing. But without changing your breath now, without controlling your breath, See if you can just quietly notice, feel the natural movement of your breath as body breathes all by itself. Can you feel that very subtle sensation in the inner passageways of your nostrils as the breath comes in and as the breath leaves just quietly noticing and if you leave If you get distracted, simply begin afresh without any judgment, just coming back to the very simple experience, body, breathing, moment, by moment, by moment. Body breathing. See if you can stay. And let your body drop into the really gentle and completely effortless space of just being. So very simple. Nothing is being asked of either your mind or your body right now. Let the weight of your body fall into the surface that it's resting on. 
tongue resting in the mouth. Hinges of the jaw loosening and a softening of the whole face. The eyes softening right back. How would it be right now? just to be here and how would it be to allow everything to be just as it is just being Just being here is enough. You don't have to be anything. Nothing to get. And maybe just get a sense of the relief of letting the whole story of your life fall away just for now no story to maintain give yourself a break yeah from the whole world and everything in it such a relief to just let it all go yeah yeah (laughs) now I'd like you to take just a few more of those really slow really deep releasing breaths and let your body receive that gift yeah really generously inhaling that fresh life giving breath and then just let the exhalation go yeah and as you inhale I'd like you to just Say a little prayer for your life, calling forward something that you really, really want. What matters to you? What does your heart long for more than anything else? And breathe that in. Breathe that in, let yourself receive that nourishment and let the exhalation be a giving back, handing over everything that's not needed, everything that keeps you stuck, everything that keeps you limited and holds you back. Just your willingness is enough. And I'm going to yeah, take a few of those deep breaths because that lets your nervous system know that it's safe, really safe to, to just let it all go. And I'm going to invite you now to open your eyes and um, to take this attitude of kindness to yourself and self-care into whatever you're doing next. 
you know, having dipped into that part of us that really cares, you know, that really does um, want to make peace a weapon, our weapon of choice within us all, whatever's going on on the surface, within deep, deep down within, within all of us, we all want peace. And so I'm going to just invite you to, um, um, you know, to, to my invitation as a meditation teacher is to dip into that part of yourself, even if it's just for a few minutes each day. And then to take that into your, um, whatever you're doing, you know, kindness to yourself, gentleness to yourself. We're all trying our best, aren't we? Right, everyone, get off the floor. <laughs> Come on, get up. It's just so, so relaxing. I know I'm going to be uh, re uh, fast forwarding through the, this uh, tonight to listen to this part of the show. Uh, I think just what a beautiful meditation. Thank you so, so much. And what a beautiful way to end it. And yes, that does that ability to spend a few seconds a day thinking something beautiful and positive can have incredible uh, ramica ramifications and, and changes the way um, everyone behaves to you, actually, doesn't it? It's quite, it's like magic. So thank you so much for that. And uh, it'd be lovely to get you back on the show later on. So what I'm going to also ask you to do as a favour is uh, when you see that the stream is live on the alternative divorce um sorry the divorce strategist and alternative divorce guide page uh which i'd like to be sh shorter but facebook just doesn't let me change it for some reason you can uh, pop your a link for more information so people can find out more about you will you do that for me absolutely thank you yes that would be a pleasure that's thank lovely you, thank you so much mm -hmm. thank you oh, thank you wasn't that wasn't that lovely? Wasn't that lovely? So I hope you're all feeling calm and in a great space. I look forward to seeing you all uh, next uh, next week on Fridays uh, in UK time is 7.30 uh, US time. I can't remember. You'll have to look it up on the site. But uh, it'd be great to have more uh, US visitors here. If you've been kind enough to leave comments, I'm really sorry. I was so zoned out by the meditation that I forgot to look. But uh, if anyone is able to comment and share, it just means that more people get the opportunity to access what we're giving here and, and the generosity of all my guests. So please do share as much as you can. And uh, remember that in the war of divorce, always, always make peace your weapon of choice. <laughs>